You apply to dozens, maybe hundreds of high paying cybersecurity jobs and you're still stuck waiting for that callback. Frustrating, right? But here's the thing, you don't know what you don't know. It's not just your resume, it's what it's missing. I've analyzed hundreds of six figures job listings and today I'm breaking down exactly what you need in your resume to get hired. Also stay with me until the end because I have a special free surprise to help you get started. JR here, an IT professional with over 16 years of experience in the government health industry, including six of those years in health IT. I got a degree in cybersecurity and several industry recognized certifications. Thanks for tuning in. Let's dive right in. Before we get to the data, let me quickly explain how I did this research. I analyzed hundreds of job listings from LinkedIn and Indeed. Focusing on US based roles, I set the filters to entry and associate level experience with salaries starting at 100,000 or more. These filters gave me thousands of results, and after analyzing the data, I noticed some fascinating trends. But here's where it gets interesting. Certain industry and roles showed up way more often than others. And this is where your career strategy needs to align. If this sounds like what you've been looking for, drop a ready in the comments and let's keep going. Cool, let's move on to what I found. So what did the data reveal? Let's start by looking at the industries driving the demand for high paying cybersecurity roles and why it matters for your career. Here's the thing, not all industries are created equal, especially when it comes to high paying jobs in cybersecurity. The fastest growing fields might not be what you think. Let's break it down. Let's talk about the two industries that keep popping up in these job listings. The first one is the government and defense sector, and this one is in high demand. Here's what I found out. Government defense and technology roles are dominating the space. These roles demand expertise in cybersecurity, national security, and compliance frameworks like RMF and NIST. Some of the most popular roles I found were the ISO, cybersecurity managers, and risk assessors. So you want a stable, high paying career? Well, the government and defense sectors have you covered. I recently did a video on where to find these jobs. This industry actually has another name that hardly anyone knows. Be sure to check it out and I'll leave the link in the description and the comments below. Now you might be surprised, but the healthcare industry is growing rapidly in the tech sector. And it's not just about doctors and nurses anymore. This is the second sector I found most prominent in these listings. The integration of tech in healthcare has skyrocketed in demand for IT security professionals. It's all about protecting sensitive patient data and staying compliant with regulations like HIPAA. If you're into both tech and making an impact on health, this is the place to be. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm familiar with both of these sectors because I've been working on them for the over 16 years. So if you have any questions, just drop a comment below and I'll be happy to help. Now that you know where the demand is, let's talk about what it takes to stand out because the skills you have might not be exactly what they're looking for. So based on my research, here are the top skills in demand across these job listings, ranked by the frequency of the mentions, risk management and compliance. It's just knowledge or frameworks like RMF, NIST, and experience with tools like EMAS, ACAS, SCAP are a must in many high demand roles, especially in government and defense. SIEM and monitoring tools, knowledge of SIEM platforms such as Splunk, IBM, Curator and Microsoft Sentinel is critical for cybersecurity and incident response roles in threat detection and SOC operations. Cloud security, expertise in cloud platforms like AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, and tools like Terraform is essential for securing a hybrid and multi-cloud environments in today's tech landscape. Incident response and vulnerability management. Familiarity with vulnerability scanning tools like Nessus, Qualities, and experience in incident response are crucial for maintaining systems integrity and addressing cybersecurity threats effectively. Now, you think you need a degree, a certification, or a combo of both to land these roles? Well, the truth might surprise you. In my research, 40 to 50% of the jobs require certifications. But let's talk about the most common ones. The first one I saw was CISSP, 
This loop was frequently required for management and high-level roles. Then it was closely followed by CompTIA Security Plus, often required for compliance with DoD D140 standards and foundational slash entry-level roles. The last one that sticked out was the GCIH or DX Certified Incident Handler, required for specific incident response roles. But now, there were some certifications listed as preferred, which I will show them here in the screen. They are preferred for different roles like leadership, cloud, pen testing, threat analysis, auditing, and infrastructure. Now, what cert was the winner? CISSP appeared in 52% of all job listing as a required certification, followed closely by Security Plus at 42%. Security Plus is a foundational cert and I recently did a video covering five reasons you should get it. Check it out here and in the comments below. Now what about degrees? Well, 49% of jobs mention a bachelor's degree as a minimum requirement with 42% requiring both certifications and degrees. I also found out that some jobs will even let you substitute a degree with years of experience but majority still want that certification you know some type of proof or validation for degrees cybersecurity computer science and it are the most common ones employers are looking for now my recommendation is to go for both a degree and a certification it can only help you to stand out among the rest and land that dream job you're looking for I also did a video on that and where to get both it will be below. And this is perfect time to let me know if you're enjoying this video. Show me a like and subscribe if you think I have provided value to you. Also don't forget at the end I have a surprise for you so don't go anywhere. Alright now that we cover what employers are looking for let's dive into the roles they are hiring for and what these positions are actually paying. Let's talk about the cybersecurity roles that pop the most and the salary ranges that comes with them. The first one was cybersecurity manager. You know, they oversee information systems, security and compliance, and they just manage security teams. Next one was the cyber information systems security analyst, uh, also the ISO, and they implement security measures and they work closely with the ISM to protect systems. Then he was the senior ISO, leads security efforts. They can do risk assessments as ensure compliance. Now, there was a lot for cybersecurity specialists. They protect the network and the systems from attacks, and they are experts in incident response and threat analysis. Lastly, the ISM, or the Information System Security Manager. They manage their overall system security policies, audits, and regulatory compliance. Now, so let's talk about money. Here's the average salary for these positions. On the minimum side, I found out that these positions are paying $92,000 and on the maximum $185,000. The overall average salary was $139,000. Now I drill down further in this data. As you can imagine, salary increase with experience. Here's how it breaks down. At entry level, this is from 0 to 2 years, is an average of $105,000. At mid level, this is from 3 to 5 years, uh, with an average of $130,000. Now for a senior level, this is 5 to 10 years, an average of $150,000. And for executive and specialized roles with 10 plus years, the average is $200,000 and beyond. As suspected, more experience leads to higher pay, with entry-level roles starting at an average around $105,000, while executive roles can push beyond $200,000. Now one more thing, before you start applying where you'll be working, I know some of y'all want to work from home, in pajamas, or from a nice white sand beach. So is remote work still the king? or are companies pushing people back to the office? Here's the skinny on that. 39% of positions are on site, 35 are hybrid, and 26% are fully remote. So while remote work is in debt, the trend is shifting with companies still offering some flexibilities. Well, there you have it. Based on this data and with what I'm about to give you, you should be able to pump up your resume to land that high paying job. If you made it all the way to the end, you are a rock star and I really appreciate you being here. As promised, I have a free resource to help you get started in your journey. 
But before we get to do that, do me a favor, leave a comment below if you enjoy this video and let me know what you like to see next. Okay, so here's the deal. I set aside a hundred, yes, a hundred current job listings that you can apply to right now. I'll drop the link in the comments and the description below for you to download. Now there's a caveat here. I can't guarantee these jobs will still be open when you see these videos, but they'll definitely give you a jump start with some solid insights on companies, locations, and other key info to help guide your search and level up your game. And one more thing, if you're thinking about starting or pivoting into a career in tech, check out my ultimate guide video. It's a long one, but it's packed with 12 career paths you can take. Thanks again. See you in the next one. JR out.